As some of you may know, I've been a behavior analyst since 2003 and worked for the Pennsylvania Verbal Behavior Project, which was a statewide grant from 2003 to 2010. When I left the project, I began working in the early intervention field with very young children through a contract with the birth to three provider in my county. It was in 2010 when I started to develop my own step-by-step -step procedures to help kids who were not talking or just talking a little bit and had what I call pop-out words. So today I wanna share with you one of the procedures that I created um, early on starting in around 2010 using a shoebox to get more language. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera from MaryBarbera.com and each week I provide parents and professionals like you with some of my ideas about turning autism around. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should do that now. Back in January of 2019, I also started a weekly podcast called Turn Autism Around. So you can check that out either on my website or by searching Turn Autism Around on iTunes. Today, I want to discuss this procedure using a shoebox that I created um, when I started working in the early intervention field with very young children, one, two, and three-year-olds, who were either not saying any words or were saying some words, but I was having trouble establishing what we behavior analysts call echoic control. So echoic control is I say ball, you say ball. And for many of our young children, with and without autism, um, they might have words, but if unless you know how, no procedures to get those words out, it's really hard to teach them. And so developing the ability to get a code control is always um, the, best, the best situation because a lot of times with kids, especially with autism, the floodgates then open and we get more and more language. Way back, some of my very first video blogs were with a little girl named Mia, and you can um, look at those video blogs now, and they were, I went out to Mia's house and I consulted with her, um, and she was talking, but it was, you know, months of intervention and, and the parents and professionals working with her still didn't have any ECOA control. She had these pop out words. I was really kind of wondering what the best way to quickly gain instructional control and get the ability to produce more, more language. Whether you know a lot about the analysis of verbal behavior or not, we want to, when we can, focus on the MAND, which is um, an operant, which means like you have a word, but you use it because you want something. So if, if somebody says to me, my child has 10 words. So the, what are the words? Okay. Cookie, drink, banana, out, um, mommy, daddy, tree, sun, you know, whatever the 10 words are. Okay, great. How does your child use those words? Oh, well, when they want to go outside, they say out and I open the door. When they want a banana, they say banana, I give them a banana. So those are both example of mans, of requests. So they want something, they say the word and they get it. But a lot of times the words, like with me, I remember her mom would hold up a, a cup with Dora the Explorer characters on it. And Mia would just say Dora, Boots, whatever the characters' names were, and she would label them or attack them. But when she wanted something, she would cry. So she had tax, but not mans. And with early learner programming, what I found over the years was that it's really hard to separate out the different operands when you're talking about early learners. So. A lot of my early learner programs that I recommend, like the shoebox, which I'm going to talk about in a second, are actually a combination of uh, the operands together. So what I would recommend is you get a shoebox. Now, in Mia's situation, we came up with the box idea, and Mom had a pasta box, so we used the, the pasta box. You can use any box. I find that a shoebox 
with a lid that's attached is the best thing and you can cut a slit into it. Obviously, this slit is just packed with a scissor. I had a client that was very exact and she wanted a perfect little slit, whatever you can do. Then you can gather pictures of family members, um, but if you gather pictures of family members, make sure it's one person per picture. So if it's mommy, it's just mommy. It's not mommy holding a ball or mommy on a bicycle or mommy with a hat on because that might be confusing. So picture of just one person in the picture, pretty close up so that the child can see the face. Um, but I'd also recommend that you go to the dollar store and get pictures of, you know, uh, just various items. So monkey, for instance. So monkey, two syllable word, lots of little kids know monkey. Okay, we'll keep that. Sun, yes. Sun is, is a good one syllable word. So when you start to think about like what words your child might come in contact with, you know, sun would be one thing. So now in this packet, we're also going to have things like x-ray. A two or three year old child that's not talking doesn't need to learn to x-ray because it's an X and no. So I would exclude that. I might exclude flower because it has a blend, unless the child's really into flowers and exposed to a lot. Kites, that depends if they have any exposure, yes or no. Turtle, kind of a little kid kind of word. Um, so two syllables, okay, we'll take it. Lemon, depends on the child. Um, tent, again, if, you, if they're not exposed to tents, then no. Um, cake, yeah, everybody is unfortunately exposed to sugar and cake. Um, fish, yes. Okay, so we have some words and maybe we have some pictures of family members too. And we would want to sit diagonal from the child and then we would want to um, say the words one at a time and we would say them, if we can, three times. Fish, fish fish, we give it to the child, we have the child, all the child has to do is put the fish in the box. They don't have to say it, they don't, you know, they, we want to pair up the ability for them to want to put it in the box. So what happens then, if a child does echo cake or some part of cake, it is they want it to put it in the box because this will become a reinforcing activity. So they want it so it's part manned, they're labeling it so it's part tact, they're echoing you because I'm going to say cake, so it's part echo. Um, it's part receptive ability, you know, cause and effect, following directions, sitting at the table with me. So we're pairing up so many things um, at the same time, but because it has a manned component in place because they wanted to put it in the box, what I find is if we really focus on 10 or 20 words and we pair them that the child, some children will pick up some words or start word approximations. And this is extremely exciting. So that's why I feel a shoe box is one of the best tools in the house usually that you can find in some pictures of family members that you hopefully have laying around that you can use um, and the dollar store cards to get language going. And I also did a video blog a little while ago on the shoebox with a little bit more explanation of the shoebox procedure. I also have a free download uh, explaining more step-by-step -step about how to do the shoebox program at home. One of the things I will say is if you are not engaging with the shoebox and the child and the cards, to actually have them not uh, laying around that the child can get into some weird stem behavior to put it up on a shelf and to engage a child when you are available um, because I have found that sometimes when you let it be free access it just uh, kind of loses its therapeutic value. That's my little tip of the day. You can use this in preschool settings and for even for older kids who are not yet talking you can use this for older kids as well and you can certainly use this within homes and uh, to get engagement going, to get responding going, and hopefully to get some language going as well. So again, if you like this, leave me a comment, download the free six, I think six step a guide about how to set up your own shoebox program. I would love to see you here next week.